Your daughter was playing patty cake with a demon, and that sickened me. I, I understand that Tabitha didn't understand that, but I did, and that sickened me. The enemy is after the generation. This is the Spirit Improved Podcast. I am Tashara. And I'm Ashley. How y'all doing? Today, we're going to be discussing Tabitha Brown, specifically the video, The Supernatural Fridays with Tab and Chance. I used to be a fan of Tabitha's content because she was this quirky black lady making vegan food. She had a little way about her. Let me see what she's talking about. Um, And she talked about hair. You know, I love natural hair. I don't know. As time went by, I just stopped watching her content. Like, I just cared less and less. The only progression that I saw was your brand. And Mm. I just stopped caring, especially, you know, when you get closer to God, a lot of things that you watch and intake, you stop. You no longer care. It's not helping me where I'm going. Not to, like, rag on her, but there's a truth of the follower of Christ. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? Just simply put, if you're seeking him diligently or just continuously at any frequency, you go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. You know more about him. He's apparent in your life. The Holy Spirit should be more evident in your life and I didn't think that that's what was taking place I feel like it's a long-winded way of saying that it feels a little uncomfortable to go off of someone's personal experience but she opened the door for conversation she said that you know we need to be having these conversations so that it's comfortable to have them so I agree I wanted us to to talk about this in this episode because I want to encourage people to let's start having more of these conversations so that people will normalize it, Um, normalize the supernatural, normalize having real conversations about spirit, dreams, people with visions and and gifts uh, so that people feel comfortable. And my gift, uh, I have several, but you know, one gift is dreaming and something in the dream happens and I wake up and tell you know, my mom or my daddy or whomever, or tell Chance what I dreamt. Then days later or weeks or a month later, the dream comes to pass. Another gift that I've had is my ability to see people who have passed on. I don't have control over it. It just happens. Uh, so she started off with saying that one of her spiritual gifts is that she has dreams. But then she went on to say that another one of her gifts is that she sees people who have passed. And that was, of course, the first red flag. Yeah. Because that's not a gift. That is not a gift from God. Right. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm thinking and I'm taking it all in. The entire video was just off. And I'm I'm thinking about it now. I watched the video and I'm just like, this is weird. But let me see where it's going to go. And when I heard, oh, I have dreams from God, I'm just like, okay, cool. And then I heard she saw spirits. Immediately I thought, no. (laughs) But specifically people who have passed on. Yeah, specifically people who have passed yeah. on. Seeing them coming and talking to you, offering you things and giving you messages. That's not something that is from God. That's not something that he does. So the example that we all should know is example of Saul, King Saul, and how he got to the point where he was not hearing from God. He wasn't having dreams. He wasn't getting any visions. He wasn't hearing anything from the prophets. So God had actually stopped talking to him. So he got so desperate that he was actually seeking out a woman who is a medium, which was crazy because previously he had all of the mediums, all of the sorcerers, all the fortune tellers. He had them all out of the land. So his servant said that there is one still in the area. So they went to go see her. But not only did he go see her, he went to go see her in a disguise. So he went to the woman who was the medium and he asked her to conjure up Samuel. And she was like, we're not supposed to do this. Saul said that if anyone contacts the dead, brings up the dead, then they will be killed. And he said, surely you will not be killed. Don't worry about it. Just do it. So she brought up quote unquote Samuel. And that's when the woman realized that he, Saul, was actually Saul. And he said, don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. Just tell me what he's saying. So the quote unquote Samuel said, why have you disturbed me bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed for the Philistines make war against me. And God has departed from me and does not answer me anymore, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called you that you may reveal to me what to do. So how awful is it a place to be 
that you have to call upon the dead to tell you what to do because God is not speaking to you. His desperation was misdirected. Instead of towards God, it was just to win or to not be destroyed. It's, it's as if, okay, God, you won't speak to me. You won't show me. I'm going to try to figure it out for myself, gain access on my own. and Illegal access. Illegal access. And I'm thinking like, okay, how does this connect to Tab? And I'm thinking, you're getting these dreams you're getting these visions. It could be scary. These demons really don't come to play with you. But you could be so desperate to want to understand that you'll put a meaning to it that it never was. Sometimes I've had a demonic dream that hit so specifically, but something slight was off. And it wasn't until Holy Spirit was just like, that's not from me. You must seek the Lord. You could see the whole dream clear as day, wake up and recall it. But you will not be able to discern without the Holy Spirit. Do not go in your own understanding. You must go through the sheep gate. This story actually used to confuse me because I'm like, was that Samuel or not? Mm -hmm. I, I never understood it. I was always confused about that. But reading it now, I'm looking at it so differently. So Samuel said, so why do you ask me? Seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy. And the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me. But the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. So before I, I wasn't sure. I thought that he really did conjure up Samuel. But now understanding familiar spirits, what are they going to do? They disguise themselves to look as close to the person as as possible. So that let you, your defenses down. Exactly. Let your defenses down. Open up your heart, your mind, everything to what they're saying because they're familiar to you. So you're going to accept and come into agreement with whatever they say. So because he opened that door, that illegal door, now that spirit was able to say whatever it wanted to say to him. He opened the door for a curse. Yeah. So while you were reading and you were reading what, quote unquote, Samuel had said, it sounded like the serpent. And when you walk with the Lord, you begin to understand how the serpent speaks. And, and remember what I said, nothing should be done without the Holy Spirit. You will think that you have the complete vision and you don't. Who gives us wisdom? Holy Spirit. With that being said, I, it reminded me of the garden even. The serpent started with a, a questioning tone, leading questions to see what you know, to see what you say, to almost discern the, the posture of your heart. Ew. It's like, like this soothsaying, sing song way about him. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hear what you're saying. And it's reminding me of something that actually happened to me. Mm -hmm. I remember I was I was kind of approached by this quote unquote prophet who was not a prophet. She was actually a witch. Mm. And she just started speaking stuff over me, asking me questions. She started asking me because this, this was a time in my life where I was very consecrated, like nothing but me and the Lord. Mm -hmm. And she's like. You did something. And I was just like, what? Like, what, what do you mean? You did something. What did you do? Mm -mm. And I'm like, I, I don't think I did anything. And um, this is a this is a time where I was very trusting of people, immature. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. And she's like, yeah, because, you know, the Lord is not allowing me to see, to see what's going on with you. It's because you did something. And I'm like, I don't think I did anything. And she kept going. She kept going. She started speaking these things over me because she couldn't see. It's actually because the Lord was protecting me. It's she that last ditch right. effort. She, Ew. she couldn't see. So she started making stuff up. The things that she was saying, I haven't experienced. But I'm like, this person, they're a prophet. They must know something I don't know. And it broke me. There go them defenses. Right. Ashley, this is the Holy Spirit dropping wisdom. You can't even read the word of God mm -hmm. without the Holy Spirit. And this is the reason why. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times we've heard this story. Yet we're getting different wisdom here. Mm -hmm. Discerning the voice of the enemy. A lot of new Christians will hear this. But uh, that's, a, that's a question a lot of new Christians have. How do I discern the voice of the Lord from the voice of the enemy mm -hmm. from my own voice? Holy Spirit will tell you right now. Now, the, I, I keep saying ill because it's it's a grimy way that he speaks. The serpent, he's not stupid. Don't forget that. The word even says he's cunning. He's cunning. Listen, he starts, he always starts with doubt. Mm -hmm. He always starts with this 
grimy, underhanded, questioning tone. Make you question yourself. Uh Mm Uh-huh. And look how he appears in such a way that when your eyes behold him or however he comes up, your defenses are not up. Your guard isn't up. Oh, this is Samuel whom I know. Right. You know, this is this is Samuel, the the help that I'm coming to, the alternative Mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Let me repeat what the Lord had already said to you. So not only am I deceiving your eyes, I'm deceiving your ears. Mm. My God, as I'm listening and as I'm hearing what it is that he's saying, it's like it's almost as if I need to read it again. Yeah. And even the next part, verse 20, immediately Saul fell full length on the ground and was dreadfully afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him for he had eaten no food all day or all night. I remember after that happened, after that witch said those things again, me i felt a depression i have never felt in my entire life there's depression there's situational depression where you know you're sad you're eating three scoops of ice cream every night but the spirit of depression is something totally different that is a darkness that you never want to feel and and so some people question how can you be so depressed like to the point where you want to kill yourself the spirit of depression that hits different You feel like there is no hope. That night I curled up in fetal position and all I saw was darkness. I felt like the Lord didn't love me, that the Lord didn't care about me. The Lord left me. I felt outside of him. And to feel outside of him is the darkest dark. I don't even know what I wanted to do. I was afraid to die without him. So I didn't didn't want to live. I didn't want to die. I just wanted nothing. (sighs) How do we get here? It's, uh, It's a part of it. Because I am focusing on a verse, but I will say, as you were speaking, I know just from testimony that depression, of course, has roots in fear and Mm -hmm. has deep, 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 deep roots of fear because fear has branches. That's a lot that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. Fear has branches Mm -hmm. and you'll see the branches of fear before you understand that its root is fear. And the, the what came back to mind was the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. And why is that so powerful? Why is that important? Because if we see the branches of fear, if we see the fruit of fear, if we discern there's a root of fear, the Lord did not give it to us. Therefore, it doesn't belong to us. Let it go. Right. Rebuke it. Renounce it. Do not come into agreement. It's not yours. Anyways, I went back to the verse of um, 18 and it sounded like what that lady was doing. It was it was an attack on the emotion. So not only now are your defenses down mm-hmm. because you did something. Right. The, the enemy will give you reason because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not execute his fierce wrath on Amalek. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Now he's adding his own consequence into it. God is the judge, the only mm-hmm. judge, the ultimate judge. He's the one who judges. And as you say, he decides between justice and mercy. Uh-huh. So, But the enemy, the, the serpent, he goes and he declares you guilty. And he wants to be like God. That's the reason exactly. why he fell. He's not going to forgive you. You're guilty. And he doesn't he doesn't like the fact that we were forgiven exactly. because he was never forgiven. This is just the surface of what Holy Spirit wants us to know. The Holy mm-hmm. Spirit wants us to discern the voice of the enemy because it's not just the outright lie anymore. Mm-hmm. Remember, the enemy is cunning. You're not coming up against an idiot. And you can feel like, oh, if I have a, a, a telling dream, it has to be from the Lord. It isn't always so. And when you see things like this, people that you may know, people that may have been close to you, people that you have an uh, an emotional relationship with, you might think dead or alive, my defenses need to be down. I know this person. Surely this must be from the Lord. Surely this must be good. And it isn't always so because the enemy is a wolf in sheep's clothing disguised as an angel of as an angel of light. Excuse me. So that's the tactics of the enemy. He'll use the best lies have what basis in truth. So I'm going to use what you know to actually be true, what what you already know happened. I'm going to use the judgment that was on you, but I'm going to add my own. I'm going to use your feeling of condemnation Mm -hmm. to say, because now you know you did bad. So you also deserve this. And what do you do? You come into agreement with it. And for a time, Ashley, in your testimony, you had come into agreement with this thing. Well, I... I questioned it Mm -hmm. instead of rebuking it and saying, no, that's not my portion. Yeah, I I didn't rebuke it. That was the issue. 
And that's another thing with these dreams. When you don't wake up and come out of agreement with these dreams, when you don't wake up, yes, and cancel every seed Mm -hmm. of the enemy, because what do seeds do? Seeds germinate, they take up root, and then they bear fruit. They grow and they bear fruit. And you will see that in your life. Trust me, even in a day's time, I've seen the demonic seed in a dream bear fruit. If you start to feel doubt, that's another thing. You need to be questioning that because the enemy uses doubt. The enemy uses the emotions. He was caught up in his feelings when he remembered the judgment the Lord had placed on him. He was low-key scared, not high-key scared. He he was moving in the shadows because he felt like, well, the Lord can't help me. I got to get it myself. And look at what became of it. And we was like, what is she in there doing, you know? We go in there, she's playing full on patty cake in the air. And we was, I said, what are you doing? She said, Granny. And my granny always played patty cake with the babies. She all, that was her thing. And I was like, <sighs> All right, so in this clip, she mentioned how her daughter was playing patty cake with her grandma. And your daughter was playing patty cake with a demon. And that sickened me. I understand that Tabitha didn't understand that, but I did. And that sickened me. The enemy is after the generation, the whole bloodline. Especially when they're children. Especially. There's so many attacks in the childhood alone. Your walk with the Lord is not just for you. Tabitha should have sought the Lord to complete the vision, to understand what was taking place. Not her own understanding, not the understanding of her elders. Because right then and there, you saw it as a wholesome scene. And I saw a child playing with a demon. Oh. People trying to make sense of what they don't understand. People trying to complete the story for themselves. And also fill in those those voids, those mm-hmm. gaps. So oh, I want to say something to make you feel better. Oh, you know, she's still here. Mm-hmm. She's still looking down on you. You know what I mean? Even Black oh. culture, period. She's still looking down on us. No, they still guiding me. No, Holy Spirit is who guides you. I got to share this because my heart's pumping right mm-hmm. now. So my mom passed away mm-hmm. last year. And after she passed, there were some people, you know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. After, after she passed, there were some people who were saying to me, you know, she's always with you. She's always in your heart. And one lady even said to me, oh, you can speak to your mom. Yeah. When you're feeling confused or you don't know which way to go, you can speak to your mom. And as they were saying these things, I would always under my breath, because I don't want to be rude. I would under my breath say, oh, beauty in the name of Jesus. But now... Having experienced what I've experienced, I will not whisper that. I will say I rebuke that in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of the things that I have gone through, the enemy tries so hard. I'm telling you, when these demons don't complete their assignment, they need a vessel. They need a body. They've been with your family from generation to generation. Now it's time for me to go to the next one. Now it's time for me to con- continue what I where I left off with this person. I came out of agreement with the generational curses. I came out of agreement with the generational mindset. I came out of agreement with the things that were done before me. I have established a new family tree with roots grounded in christ a new covenant so the lord i've i've had dreams of quote unquote my mom it's so important especially when someone dies it is so important to get in the spirit and build up your spirit man because especially when you're dreaming you're going to need some defense because when you're dreaming sometimes you think it's it's real so i'll give an example of one of the dreams um There was one dream where I saw a demon appearing as my mom and she was just talking to me as normal. Like, you know, hey, you know, the family, blah, blah, blah. I was afraid in the dream because I was like, oh, my gosh, I thought you died. And I got rid of so many of your things. You're going to be so mad at me. And then the spirit rose up because the spirit then said, that's not your mom. And so then in the dream, I looked at that spirit and I said, say Jesus Christ is Lord. And and that spirit posing as my mom said, Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ is, and I said, say Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm. Jesus Christ is, and it got nervous and it walked away. It walked away. Another dream. There were so many. Another dream. I was at some place and from behind me, someone said, hello. And it was in, it was in my mom's voice. 
I turned around. I saw the spirit posing as my mom. I cancel every seed, chaff, Girl. and arrow of the enemy now in the name of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Even in the listener right now in the name of Jesus. Every Ooh. seed, every chaff, every arrow of the enemy, I break it into pieces. I cancel. So I turned around and it looked like my mom, it looked like my mom, but like with a tan, it looked like she was just glowing. She just smiled at me. Like after she said hello, she just was just smiling at me like so pleasant. And then I said, you're not my mom. And that smile twisted. And then that spirit started choking me, mm. pushed me into a wall and started choking me till I got up. And I started rebuking it in the name of Jesus. Those were just two of many times where that spirit tried, tried to come back, tried to keep living, trying to keep being in this place, trying to open doors so it can continue what it has done from generation to generation. And I remember when I was a little girl, my mom used to say things to me. I noticed she used to say things like, oh, yeah, one night I was sleeping and then I felt a presence on the bed, like as, as if someone was sitting on the edge of the bed and it was grandma. And I was a little girl. I didn't, I'm just like, oh, okay, that's cute. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I didn't know nothing about this stuff. You know, I didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she even told me about a time when she was driving and she fell asleep behind the wheel. And then she felt a hand on her shoulder. She said it was grandma. They give so much credit to the dead and none to the Lord. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the Bible, it says, if you love your father or your mother more than me, you are not worthy of me. Oh, wow. There's people who actually believe more so in their dead relatives than the living God. You ought not to walk by your sight, but by your faith. God is the giver and the increaser of our faith. God is the tester of our faith. So the way you're supposed to walk is with him. So when you're seeing things of man's understanding of man's sight, you ought not to be subscribing to these things. The way the enemy works, it's always something that is personal, Ashley. You had a revelation and I, I just feel like this is a perfect time to come in with it. This is a perfect time because you were talking about how familiar spirits work. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And this is this is this is showing how the en the enemy's tactics, even as you were speaking earlier. I didn't want to cut you. But do you see how relentless the enemy is? Mm -hmm. The Lord said he's prowling around like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. He is prowling around. Have you ever seen uh, on National Geographic, them lions? All they do is look for food. All they do is prowl around. Mm -hmm. All they do is look for who they can devour. This is the tactics of the enemy being exposed. Do not take it lightly. Do you see how many ways the enemy tried to attack you? And it was at a moment where you perceive where you were perceived to be weak because you had experienced a loss. Mm. You should have been wrapped up in your emotions. If there was ever a point for you to walk by sight, by your feelings, to take matters into your own hands, it was now. So mm. the enemy was just like, look, look, let me pounce. Mm. And when the enemy didn't get you, he chased you. When the enemy didn't get you from the left, he tried from the right. When the enemy didn't get you with somebody you knew, he tried to get you with somebody you didn't know. This is how the enemy works. Mm. His tactics are being exposed. Ashley, go ahead. You're boiling. I girl, I am because <laughs> what bubbling. you're saying, I didn't have time to wrap up in a blanket and mourn. Mm. I did not have time to lament. I was warring from the second it happened. Lord Jesus. From Talk the, about it. From the moment I found out, I was warring. This is the love of the Lord. This is the love of the Lord, and a lot of people won't perceive it. But for those of you who do perceive it, hear me. This is the love of the Lord before he would allow her to be devoured, before he would allow her to get caught up. I was not seeking to bring my mom back. I had to come into terms and believe that the Lord took her in a time where she had accepted him. That's the only thing I hope. That's the only thing I got to do from there. Let the dead bury the dead. Wow. I'm not going to keep the dead here. Wow. But another thing about, you know, Tabitha talking about her daughter and how she was kind of following in her footsteps. She got the quote unquote gift as well. The thing is, if you open in the door like that, you're opening the door for the further generations. You're encouraging for it to pass on. And kids are so impressionable. They see you. My mom, she grew up Catholic. Same. So there are certain things that we would do. Like before we eat, we would do that cross on the forehead to the chest and mm -hmm. the left to the right. And I would do that too. Why? Because I saw my mom do it. Mm -hmm. I was I remember I was in elementary school. I did not eat my Lunchable until I first did that because I believe you have to do that mm -hmm. before you eat. And because that's a, a door my mom opened. And the thing is about the Catholic faith, they're very into idolatry. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. They glorify mm-hmm. dead people. Heavy. Look at Mary. They glorify Heavy. her. Mother Mary. They have a picture of her like she's someone to be exalted when not even Jesus exalted her. <laughs> he had a speaking engagement and Mary came with Jesus' brother and was like, hey, can we speak to Jesus? And Jesus was like, who? My, my mother is here. The people who are doing the work. My brothers are the people doing the work. Who Who's that woman? Who's she? Wow. He did not exalt his mother. So why are we exalting her? There's wisdom here, Ashley. The way that we should walk, we follow in Jesus' footsteps. Even oh. Jesus... He was just like, I don't love my mother more than my father God in heaven. Mm. I'm here doing his work. And by his word, the people who do the work of the Lord are my brothers and my sisters. Wow. He was so devoted. He put God first in every way possible. That is how we ought to be. This is this might not feel or seem like love to you. But remember, The Lord's standard and his ways are different. When I said earlier, when Ashley mentioned she she didn't have time to lament, a lot of people would have been like, what? You you didn't have time to to, to cry, to feel sad? Ashley was working. Ashley was praying. Before the Lord would let her get caught up, he taught her hands to war. And she came out stronger. She came out of a uh, what felt like a fiery place of what could have felt like a fiery place, not smelling like smoke. Things were 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 laid in place to devour her. Things were laid in place to trip her up. But the Lord wouldn't let it be so. And if you're so uh, focused on self, if you're so focused on things that are not uh, uh, the Lord, if you're so focused on your sight and not your faith by which you should have been walking, you could get caught up. The enemy doesn't attack you the most <laughs> When you're strong, my love, it's when you're weak. It's when you're weak or when you're perceived to be weak. There you go. When when you're perceived to be vulnerable, you must be in the spirit or you'll miss it. A lot of people would try to gain encouragement from the dead. Mm. But Psalms 3 verse 3 came to my mind. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. The Lord is the one who gives the comfort. Holy Spirit gives comfort. He's our comforter. Yes. He's been gifted to us to do so. Yes. (laughs) As I was listening to that clip, what's what's the first thing that I had heard? I said so much while she was talking. I don't know why you'd be talking while she's talking. Because I have to get it out my head. Oh, Lord. Put it back. When you don't submit to it completely, you're running, so you're exhausted. Constant running is you out of breath. You are tired. And I was running from it for a long time. So that's why I was so exhausted. <clears throat> but when I prayed and I asked God, like, please take this away from me. I had a couple of years where it wasn't as, <clears throat> what's the word? Strong. But then it felt like I was missing something. I didn't feel whole. Uh, but then after, you know, being sick and saying, God, you can have me and I'm going to be who you created me to be. I said, I accept. I accept it. All right. So when she said you don't submit to it, when you don't submit to it completely, you're running. That's why you're exhausted. Ashley, remember what I was telling you when we started this podcast? I didn't want to, but I heard the Lord and I said, yes, this is my obedience. This is not my feelings. Right. And when I started in worship ministry, I did not want to be on that altar, but I didn't want to be like those ones that buried the gift of the Lord. I said while she was talking that you don't submit to the gift, you submit the gift to God. But what gift? Because speaking to the dead and seeing the dead is not a gift. Well, not from God. A it's a perversion. Gift. Right. Exactly. It's a perversion of a the perverted gift. perverted gift. Because there are people who do get dreams from the Lord. There mm-hmm. are people who get visions during the day. These things do happen. And it is a gift from the Lord. Mm-hmm. However, when it is not submitted to the Lord, it is open to be perverted. And even when it is submitted to the Lord, the enemy still tries to pervert it, which is why you got to you gotta be on guard. Yeah. When my mama was uh, sick, we always talked about death, me and her. You know, my mama was gifted as well. And we always talked about death, and we knew she was going to die. And I said, Mama, you know, I don't know what I'm doing when you're gone, right? You know, you're my best friend. We talk about everything. And she said, you know, I felt the same way when Granny died. She was like, you know, that was her mama. She said, but one day she was at work, 
and she was having a rough day. She was there, but she went to sit at her desk and there was a nickel sitting at the edge of her desk. And she said, for whatever reason, out of nowhere, she just was drawn to this nickel. And she was like, in, the, in that moment, she felt the presence of her mama. All of a sudden, she just felt like everything calmed down for her. And she was like, and from that day, whenever she was having a good day or a bad day, when she just really missed her mama, she would find a nickel. And I remember looking at her, I was like, no, mom, you think Granny leaving you nickels? And she was like, I, I do, I think so. I was like, all right, so when you, when you die, what you gonna leave me so I know that you're around? And she said, I'm gonna double it, I'm gonna leave you dimes. And we laughed about it. I was like, all right, this is probably like six or eight months before she passed away. When my mama passed away, we was in North Carolina. Nobody was here in our apartment for almost a month, really. Mm -hmm. It was about three and a half weeks. And the first night that we came back home, we went to get in the bed and pulled the covers back. And the bed had about maybe like seven or eight dimes in it. Things that start in the spirit have made it to the natural with these friggin' nickels and dimes. <laughs> The, the enemy is literally nickel and diamond you. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm recording. No, cut it out. No. I, I should have looked. I'm there chatting with you. The devil is nickeling and <laughs> diming you. <laughs> what? <laughs> he be really playing us like the fool. <laughs> And, you know, I'm not laughing at this lady and, and her experience and her understanding. Don't get me wrong, but, you know. No, it got to be said. Mm. What people need to understand about familiar spirits is that these are ancient spirits. Yeah. They've been in your family bloodline before you were even born. They've Ooh, been thought. there generation to generation. They study your family. They research your family. They see all the ins and outs. They see what you've been through. They see what you love. They see what you hate. They see where you're weak. And they take note of it all. Their father is the father of lies. The same cunningness yes. and tact that he has is used on you. These spirits, they know that familiarity is comfortable because it's what you're used to. It's what you've seen. So what they do is they disguise as something that, you, that you're familiar with, something that you'll easily accept. Because once you accept, you open a door. Mm. And once you open a door, you open a door for havoc, for chaos, for destruction, for death, for sickness, for illnesses. What you said, Sister Ashley, once you accept. Yes, accept be it. Be careful what you accept. There's a part you have to play in order for these things to really take hold. Mm. Once you accept. Take these nuggets with you. Mm -hmm. And think about familiar spirits and, and seeking the dead and necromancy. These are things that provoke the Lord. You ever been provoked? Yes. Second Chronicles 33, 6. And he burned his sons as an offering in the valley of the son of Hinnom and used fortune telling and omens and sorcery and dealt with mediums and with necromancers. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. And he just kept going. It's, you know what? When someone just poking you, oh, just poking you, poking you. And it builds, yes. Poking you, poking you. And so you just explode. Mm. Speaking to the dead, inquiring of the dead, communicating with the dead provokes the Lord to anger. I thought Sodom and Gomorrah. How you just said in that verse how he did this, he did this, he did this, he did this. And that was provoking the Lord, like poking at the Lord. Because the Lord our God will not be mocked. Please do not play. They did so many things. It was so much more than just being gay. They <laughs> were doing a lot. Mm. And I, I, I strongly believe that was not their first warning. That was not their first conviction or their first hearing from the Lord. And the Lord was provoked. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Nobody lived. <laughs> Except for Lot. Lot and his daughters. His daughters, right. Yeah. Everybody got whacked. So what you said, Ashley, provoked to anger, poked until you explode. Don't let the load explode on you. Yes, Leviticus 26. If a person turns to mediums and necromancers, whoring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. These are things that are so dangerous and if only you knew when you're inquiring of the dead when you're speaking to the dead when you're saying things like i still feel you near me mm. i still hear you near me mm. I, I i know that that was you no wow. it wasn't and 
and let's speak about some other familiar spirits, Incubus and Succubus. Mm-hmm. I feel like that spirit, it grabs people in different ways. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, they got a type? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> have you ever found yourself in the same exact relationship over and over and over again with different people? They end up doing the same things to you. Why? Why are you attracted to that same type of person? Because it's familiar to you. You might not even see it in the beginning, but that spirit saw you coming. And guess what happens? It's always destroyed. It's always something that is tainted. Cheating happens. Abuse happens. Help me out, sister. Ain't no help. Girl, you said it. (laughs) Girl, you said it. Yes. So that same spirit comes with different faces. And this is something that we have, I have dealt with in my own marriage. And I'm going to share this a little, Mm -hmm. even though it's super uncomfortable. So my husband was... um, dealing with that spirit i believe for the men it's the succubus spirit Mm -hmm. so my husband i i believe he was dealing with that from before we even got married there was this one day he he told me he had this dream he's like it was a sexual dream but it was you red flag right so i'm like listen first of all we not married so we not on that so you know that wasn't me and you would think you would think that those things stop because you know you married now but guess what no because those spirits believe that they're married to you. Those those demons think that they're married to you. They try to claim you for themselves. Remember, you're a, your house. Right. So they come disguised as people that you're familiar with, someone mm. that you'll you would accept. And then they marry you in the spirit. So you might wake up looking and feeling as if you just had sex. Because that spirit is having sex with you in your dream. Mm-hmm. Some people call it a wet dream. I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus that is name. a demon. They try to instill covenants in your marriage. I remember when we first got married, and this is another thing, another open door for those spirits. You may think that you can, when you're married, you know, because they say the marriage bed is undefiled, that you can do whatever you want. No, no, no. So I remember before I got married, you know, I, I purchased, you know, some lingerie, some things, some, some <laughs> sexy little things <laughs> from some questionable places. Okay. So mm, I'm thinking. Saints, hold on. Wait, what? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> pick up pick up on that too. Okay. What's your per- you was in marriage, so you thought it was okay. You purchased right? some questionable things from where? Some questionable places. places. <laughs> you you think that that that, yeah. that sex shop is okay because you married? <laughs> Get on up out of there. Girl. But continue, sister so Ashley. I, you know, I wanted something sexy mm-hmm. for, from my, from my, you know, honeymoon and stuff like that. So the truth. It it just was not a sexy time. Mm-hmm. And I had a dream about that outfit. It's like I had that outfit on and I was behaving in ways that, you know, a woman of God should not behave. Mm-hmm. Let's just say that. And God was just revealing to me that even that, even that piece of clothing, that lingerie has a spirit attached to it. My I God. thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. It's, this is my husband. I can wear this. If only you knew the intentions <laughs> of the person who made this outfit. Single if people. only you know what was spoken over this outfit if only you knew who came up with the design of this outfit Mm. if only you knew what people who wear this outfit do and i'm just like you know what cut it up (laughs) this is also a message for single people the ones who get excited for marriage thinking you can do whatever you want oh no i know a married couple oh lord you keep bringing me to marriage the married folk i know a married couple they pray before they have sex Mm. (laughs) now that's not everybody but please understand that the entire institution, not institution, the entire what mm-hmm. concept institution mm-hmm. of marriage is from God. He must instruct every way of it. it mm-hmm. I pray mm-hmm. I'm saying this correctly. He he must be a part of it all. The vision is not complete without him. This is for married and single people alike. Don't think that those desires you had before in your singleness or when you were in the world can come to fruition just because you're married now. Oh, you got the okay. What does Sister Ashley just say? She was convicted by the Holy Spirit about an article of clothing in her marriage. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. If only you knew. And and you saying that, like, at first I was just kind of like, woo, that's that's holy, holy matrimony. Mm. But I get it. I I absolutely 1000% get it because you know how like Pastor Cal you know Mm. he used used to say marriage ain't for punks 
It's and I had no idea until like of course I knew that you know there's gonna be a battles because you know we're both man and woman of God. We're coming together. The enemy don't like that. But until it happens, the battles, <laughs> the night battles. Wow. Forget about. I mean, not forget about. But of course, there's stuff during the day. There's the stresses of everyday life. But at the at the at the hours, the the twelve o'clock in, in the morning, mm. the one o'clock, the Them two watch o'clock, hours. the three o'clock, the battles. Mm. Just to actually talk about it, you know, as you were speaking, Holy Spirit Ooh. said, "Wow!" And and this is love. This is love in the same way that we mentioned when you didn't have time to lament because the Lord had to teach your hands to war. I'm single. Marriage is not something I pray about because of many reasons. But it's if, if it is a desire of your heart, you must pray about it. You must seek the Lord of what he says. And he just said to me, this is why you need to be of sober mind always. If you were in a marriage, even just listening to these, these, these battles that they deal with, don't you see how important it is to be of sober mind? Don't you see that marriage isn't what will make the spirit spouse go away? Uh, don't you see uh-uh. that marriage is not will make the lust go away. He had to get deliverance. So these things, these familiar spirits, you find comfort in it because they're giving you stuff that you're used to having. They're giving you communication that you're used to having. Or things that you desire. Right. They're giving you the the same advice that you always used to get, the same love you always used to get, the same presence that you used to have for all these years until you come out of agreement and you expose it. When you expose it, see if you see all the rainbows in the sunshine. For all the people who have been contacting the dead or the mediums, the fortune tellers, try this. Try to ask the spirit to say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Not only that, but tell that spirit that it's not real. Whoa. See what they do. That won't be mama no more. Ashley. That won't be grandma no more. <laughs> Talk. It won't be them no more. There's been a couple dreams that I've had and they were demonic and it wasn't even familiar spirits. It wasn't even familiar spirits. I recognized, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Spirit, that uh, a character or a person, uh, a look in a dream, what appeared to be a person was actually a demon. And I watched it contort. When you call the enemy, this is that is very important to expose the enemy. That's why some people feel a fear around doing so. That's why people feel hesitant about doing so. I guess you'll be dismayed before men when you do so because there's a power about just exposing the enemy and just saying what it is. Just saying that that's not true. Mm. Just saying that that's not true. Hallelujah. And then remember with Jesus on the Mount, literally just saying what the truth is. Exposing the enemy, releasing the truth, coming into agreement with the truth is powerful. Oh, yeah. It's no small feat. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and another thing I wanted to mention was just the Israelites. Once they left Egypt, the bondage of Egypt, familiarity of Egypt, because mm. they were in Egypt for a very long time. For generations. Yes. I think it started with Joseph. Joseph was the one who was thrown into the, the pit yeah. and then he went to the palace. Right. Mm-hmm. So he kind of was the one who brought his family to Egypt. He was kind of like the the ambassador to Egypt. Yeah. So the Israelites migrated to Egypt. And over years, throughout the many different pharaohs, Mm -hmm. the pharaoh's heart started to twist against the Israelites, where they saw them, they saw the Egyptians as superior to them. And then they enslaved them. So for years, for generations, they were enslaved in Egypt until Moses stepped into position and was petitioning for their release once they were released of course they were happy yes we don't have to do that no more we don't have to live that way no more what was familiar is now in our past now we're looking forward to our future of being delivered but what happened every time something got a little bit shaky or a little bit rocky what happened every single time they yearned for what was familiar. They yearned for what they've been doing from generation to generation that they were upset about doing. They were used to it. This this new uncomfortableness, they could not see the fruits of it. And then there's something else you said, Sister Ashley. But what was that? I don't know. But another thing, it's making me think about even Tabitha. Because remember how she was delivered. From experiencing that, experiencing that, um, seeing the dead or hearing from the dead. 
But then she yearned. She missed it. And she wanted to go back to it. Listeners, rebuke every remnant of Egypt. Rebuke, let the old man die. I know if you're, you've heard me say this before, but let the old man die. Let Michelle the old Williams. ways die. There we go. Let the old ways die. Let them die. And I, I definitely want to say something because familiar spirits are very territorial. They inhabit territories. They inhabit bloodlines. They inhabit cities. And it's what's familiar. It's a lot of times it's what makes that city that city. Look here. The Lord's name is jealous. That's what the word says. Don't put no other gods before him. And even more so, this this is a, a let this be a call to pray for deliverance. Continue. I'm sorry. OK, so they're territorial. They're principalities. They inhabit certain areas. They feel like those, that's their area. That's their territory. So I used to live in L.A. And a lot of people who go to L.A., people will go to L.A. on fire for God and leave L.A. on mild for God. Just because of how that territory is. As much as I love L.A., there is, there is a God that reigns over that, that region over there. Lowercase g. Yes, lowercase g. And I call it snail head it's the buddha statue there's the buddha that has the little things on its head some people say they're snails some people say that they're curls i don't care they got them baby curls <laughs> i don't care but listen i've probably been only to one house in la mm. that did not have that statue in it just one and they hold it as aesthetic aesthetically yes. pleasing mm -hmm. exactly they make it look so so quote-unquote zen you know, they put the statue there. They put little rocks around it. They put a little waterfall. <laughs> oh, honey, don't garner your own peace. It's Girl, not going to work. Whatever spirit is behind that statue or that quote unquote God is heavy in L.A. You can cut it with a knife. L.A., Hollywood, Beverly Hills, they are big on new age, necromancy, fortune telling, yoga. They are big on all of those things. It's very normal. It's very, very common. If you don't do those things, you're actually seen as very weird. I'm sure you've noticed, not that we watch that much reality TV, but you can't watch a single reality television show where they don't have an episode when they're where they're either consulting a medium, they're getting their fortune told, it's a thing. they're doing some kind of spiritual healing, right? or they're doing some kind Burning of yoga. Sage, there's always, yes, there's mm -hmm. always an episode in every single reality show. There's at least one episode where they have to do something spiritual like that and and sometimes it'd be at random they're doing tarot cards hypnotism yes all of that because that spirit is super heavy in that region and astrology yes that is very heavy i mean that's heavy everywhere yeah but in la it's different in job interviews some people <laughs> i'm telling you i've had job interviews oh, I mm -hmm. yes job interviews where your quote-unquote zodiac sign determines whether or not you get the job dumb it's it's bizarre. You are Libra. Okay. You really good. You good peoples. Okay. Stupid. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm not. It's but dumb. Those are familiar spirits. Mm. I always end up with the Pisces. I always familiar spirits. You remember your slap board? Oh. <laughs> I thought about the fact that every time I hear somebody talk about the Zodiac signs, I just want to slap. Just shut up. <laughs> and I thought maybe you shouldn't think that. And then your slap board came to mind. You, you're you never going to convince me that the sun, the moon, and the stars that the Lord placed in the sky for the telling of seasons and certain signs mm -hmm. that is going to tell me who I am. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. It's not going to give you any type of discernment. Discernment comes from the Holy Spirit who tells you who you are. You find your identity in Christ. That's it. And that's all. Mm -hmm. The enemy been trying to pervert our identity from our youth. And now he's doing it even more so uh, throughout our lives. The enemy has been trying to pervert our identity from the very beginning. If you are a believer and you are into astrology and you're talking about star signs and angel numbers, go ahead and repent. Or tarot cards. Or tarot cards. Go ahead and repent. You would be surprised how many Christians are into tarot cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me tell you something. He placed them in the sky and he told you what they were for. And now you're hearing all this other stuff. If you believe in God, why are you believing that other stuff? He told you what they was for. And then he went ahead and told you 
don't be involved in them things. <laughs> don't provoke me to anger. Don't provoke me to anger. I told you what I told you. You know, sometimes I pray about a thing, be like, Lord, I just don't know what to do. It's like, but but I told you what to do. So how are you going to tell me you don't know what to do? Because what you told me to do ain't comfortable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's not familiar to me. I'm whining and complaining. And, and it's not mm-hmm. even in an accusatory tone. It'll just be like, well, I already told you what to do. So if you'd like that breakthrough, just do it. If you find it difficult, I'll help you. You're not without me. You talking like you alone or something. You're not. So. A lot of people don't believe in the gifts that are supernatural, but they are real. Um, and I think that we should talk about them more because that's how non-believers become believers. Because things-